Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to start the series on the modern defense, also known as the Robach defense, named after Karl Robach. A very close relative to the Pirates defense we've, we've just uh, finished uh, the series on. And the modern defense is slightly different, uh, sli uh, di venomous in a slightly different way. And white has to prepare, be prepared for it uh, as well as for the Pierce defense and black should know what he's doing be because the differences between the Pirates and the modern are quite huge. Now what is the modern defense? Modern defense is a hyper modern opening, as the name says, in which black aims to give up the center to white, give white the opportunity to take up the center with pawns on e4 and pawns on d4, and then black tries to disrupt, disrupt that center afterwards. So the modern defense is played after pawn to e4, with black responding with pawn to g6. Now black is going for his normal uh, hyper modern setup with bishop to g7, castling short, playing d6 and then going on from there. The main idea for black in the modern defense is going to be to strike through the center with the move c5. Uh, white has only one response here, once black relinquishes the center with the move g6 you should take it, so pawn to d4, taking up the center, and white plays bishop to g7. And now you already have the makings of a hyper-modern system, uh, similar to the King's Indian defense or the Benoni defense, in which black is playing on the first three ranks, leaving his pieces here, trying to castle his king and only then get involved into the real fight. So seemingly uh, black is neglecting the classical chess principles and white is uh, playing according to the classical chess principles, but black has uh, threats afterwards and black can compensate for the loss of ideal play, I would say. Now, uh, this is where we are going to be branching out. This will only be an introductory video on the modern defense, and uh, I'm going to make more videos on the specific variations. We are going to go over the standard line with knight to c3. That is going to be one video. One separate video after that is only going to be the Tiger's Modern, named after Tar Tiger, uh, Tiger Hillarp Persson, uh, a Swedish grandmaster who introduced his own system into the modern defense, which is quite extraordinary. Then we are going to be looking at f4, uh, the three pawns attack, the, the position with c4, bishop to c4, which is uh, the bishop attack c4, which is the Everback system, and knight to f3, which is the least active position to play for white, which is the two knights variation. So there are going to be six more videos in the series on the modern defense. Now let's uh, just give you a brief overview of what the opening is about. Let's say white continues with the main move knight to c3, the standard line. This is the, the main move and arguably the best move for white. Black continues in hyper-modern fashion. Black doesn't go for any uh, central uh, squares immediately. Black plays d6, opening up his light-squared bishop and preparing either the move e5, as in the Pierce defense, or the move c5, which is most likely to happen in the modern. And if you play the modern defense, openings you should know and which you should play uh, against d4, which complement each other greatly, are either the Benoni, or the King's Indian defense, because uh, white will have three pawn setups, three pawn structures that he's going to aim for. We are going to go over them uh, a bit later on. Uh, and those are uh, the Morozzi bind pawn, bind pawn structure with pawns on c4 and pawns on e4, the Benoni pawn structure in which the black pawn is on c5 and, and white is uh, playing for the weakness on d6 and the king's indian pawn structure in which the black pawn is on e5 and black is trying to play f5 so these are the three pawn structure structures you have to know and these are the two complementary openings to the modern defense so remember that if you play the modern against e4 two very good openings to play against d4 are either the king's indian or the benoni defense because they could help you develop your style of play and understand uh, understand the pawn structure and the middle games better. Now let's continue. Here white has several choices. White could either go for f4, going in for a sort of Austrian attack uh, from the Pierce defense. White could play bishop to e3, which is the most principled move. White could also go for a move such as g3, and there are other moves we are going to go over all of them in detail in the standard line video. So white definitely has a lot of setups. Uh, and 
Let's say white continues with bishop to e3. Black goes for his standard plan. For this introductory video, I'm going to use the tiger's modern setup as an example. Uh, here, from this position on, on move 4, black would choose between several moves. Uh, now the main move has become pawn to a6, which is the tiger's modern. Uh, if you want to transpose to the peer's defense, knight to f6 is the way, and now you have now you have the peer's defense, the standard peer's. This is actually the makings of the 150 attack, where white is going to play queen d2 and castle long. So if you want, you can still transpose. Or after bishop to e3, you can play the move c6. And uh, this is the second most often way uh, the, the modern defense is played, going for the same idea, but with a slightly different pawn move order. But let's look at a6, because this is the most modern defense-like move. a6 is preparing a simple queenside expansion. Uh, now, one thing that should be noted, the tiger's modern only works if the white knight is developed to c3, because otherwise, after your main idea of pawn to b5, uh, the pawn on b5 isn't threatening to dislodge the knight with b4, and white can simply respond with the move c3, so this should only be played if the knight is on c3. So after a6, white continues with queen to d2, you continue with b5, white's main move here is f3, and knight to d7. Uh, the main difference between the peers and the modern is that black is delaying the development of his g knight to f6, which is one of the first moves in the peers defense, and uh, black is not giving white the option of having the strong move e5. Of course, e5 is a much weaker move here because the knight hasn't been developed yet. Uh, here white can continue with, uh, either with h4 or with, uh, or with uh, a4, striking on one or the other side of, side of the board, and black will have to adjust. But you can see the makings of black's idea. Black's main idea here is to finish his development by going bishop to b7, c5, trying to expand on the queen side, eventually playing knight to f6 and then castling. And even though black doesn't have that much active play and even though black hasn't contested the center that much, uh, black's play and black's pieces are actually perfectly harmonious and there aren't that many threats to black's position. I actually prefer the, prefer the modern to the peers because it's slightly less, less risky. Uh, the fact that you don't have your knight on f6 significantly restrains uh, white's options. Now let's look at one sample setup. Here I've only given a king to white just to show you what black wants to do and to show you one important principle about the modern defense. Uh, basically whatever white is doing, you are not going to enter a conflict until the middle game and more often than not you are going to be able to develop all of your pieces and uh, get a posi position such as this one before any exchanges happen and before any real... Uh, uh, central tension is resolved and very often you are just going to be playing around white pieces. you're going to playing around white to be playing around white and preparing your pawn trusts and your pawn uh, expansions on the queen side and in the center afterwards so your main idea is to keep your pawn structure as such sort of a dragon formation in the sicilian except that you still have your c5 pawn it's most often going to be exchanged but for now you have it you're going for this fianchetto structure with your pawns on g6 and d6 and the other pawns not moving and on the queen side you want to play a6 b5 c5 expand and crush white so your main idea is to develop and then to break through the center now white of course has chances of his own and white's play is slightly easier and uh, I believe that most grandmasters uh, actually prefer white in this position uh, the reason is that white has more space as shown here White is controlling a lot more key squares. And white has uh, easier peace play, I would say, because it's at white's leisure to, to castle whichever side he wants. It's at white's leisure to decide which side of the board he's going to be attacking on. Uh, we already said that white can either play h4 or a4 here, and white has sort of a freer hand in play. Let's look at some other variations. After e4, g6 the modern, d4, bishop to g7, white doesn't have to go for c3. Another popular way of playing is f4, the three pawns attack, similar to the Austrian attack, with the difference of the knight not being on f6 yet, so after d6, knight to f3. Now black could opt for knight to f6, similar to the Austrian attack, or black could play something different once again with... Uh, an expansion with c5 and uh, black black would either go for b6 bishop to b7 so you you have much more options than against the the austrian attack in the peers this knight that isn't on f6 is giving you those options 
another way for, for white to play, and probably one of the most aggressive ways, is bishop to c4, the bishop attack, looking at the weakness on f7, which is especially weak once... Uh, since the, the knight isn't on f6 yet, and you don't have an option to castle. So d6, knight to f3, knight to f6 is the best move here, and this is now uh, very similar to the peer's defense. Queen to e2, castles, castles. And you have... Uh, you can see that white has more space, you can see that white has more peace activity, and you can see that black is still to break through in the center. Another way to play is c4, which is going into the Averbach system with d6, knight c3, knight f6, and after knight to f3, uh, you have transposed to the king's Indian defense, as I said, a very complementary opening to the modern. And after bishop to g7, white can also go for knight to f3, and after d6, knight to c3, the two knights variation, which is a slightly improved uh, classical pierce for, for black, because once again the knight isn't on f6. So white definitely has his options, white definitely has ways to get you out of play. White actually has ways to transpose to the king's Indian defense, should he wish to, so you need to, to be prepared against a lot of things. Now let's see. Uh, the first uh, pawn structure that I wanted to talk about is the Benoni pawn structure. And if white gets what he wishes to get, he's going to have one of the three. The first one is the Benoni pawn structure where you have a weakness on d6 and you constantly have to be on the lookout for the move e5 where black is going to either exchange those pawns and uh, give white a very strong d5 pawn or where, where the d6 pawn is going to be under a lot of pressure because you don't have the option to play e6 otherwise the pawn is undefended and white is going to have plans of knight to c3, knight to b5 and putting pressure on d6 so Benoni plans. Another pawn structure uh, which white is aiming for is the king's Indian pawn structure, which we saw white could get easily with transposition from the Averbach system. And here, once again, you need to know what to do. The modern is very complex because you need to know a lot of plans from a lot of openings. Uh, your main, main plan here is to push through with f5 and to transfer your pieces to the king's side for an attack and make sure that you are, you are faster than white's pieces on the queen side. Uh, and the third pawn structure is the Morozzi bind pawn structure, which white could also aim for with the move c4, and exchanging his d4 pawn for your c5 pawn, as I said, your c5 break is going to be your main main break, and once you exchange and the knight takes, then white can be left with the Morozzi bind setup, in which you have uh, much less space, your, your pieces are quite restrained, uh, when compared to whites, and your only better piece is your light squared bishop, which will hopefully be either on b7 or somewhere more active, such as e such as e6, and white's light squared bishop is going to be stuck on e2. So those are the, the three pawn structures you need to master, because uh, if white gets what he wishes for, he's going to enter one of these three. Either the Morozzi bind setup with pawns on e4 and c4, or the King's Indian setup, where you are going to have to find breaks with f5, or the Benoni pawn structure, when you are going to be weak on d6. So, these are the, the variations that we are going to go over. We are going to go over each one in great depth, because they are all very different. I'm going to talk about uh, specific ideas in each opening for both sides, and hopefully you can find a weapon of your own. Let me just show you an example of how black could go badly wrong. Let me just flip the board. Uh, the modern defense is good for black, but it's also very venomous, and if you are not careful, you could be in trouble fast. So e4, g6 the modern, d4, bishop to g7, knight to f3, while it goes for the standard line of the, uh, for the two knights variation of the modern, d6, and now uh, white cho uh, chooses to play bishop to c4 instead of knight to c3, bishop to c4, a very normal developing move, a very venomous move, and now white is going to aim to castle king side, develop his other knight to c3, develop his other bishop to e3, perhaps queen to d2 or queen to uh, queen to d3, and continue from there. And here, black can already go badly wrong. As we said, uh, developing the knight to, f to f6 is not, idea, uh, is not an idea in the modern defense. You might be tempted to play the move a6 and uh, to play the move b5. You might want to get your bishop to b7. However, if you play a normal developing move such as knight to d7, you are already losing in this position. And this is just one trap in the modern, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to go over more in the specific videos. But here already white has a winning advantage, because now white can take bishop takes f7 check, the best move is actually not to take the bishop, but you are losing in any case. So let's say you take, 
king takes f7 and after knight to g5 check you either lose your queen or you get checkmated uh, the first idea is king to e8 and after king king to e8 knight to e6 your queen is lost after knight to g5 if you go queen to f6 check uh, king to f6 then queen to f3 check and this is checkmate you can't really do anything take and take and take and take and take and there's nothing you can do and if after knight to g5 you go king to f8 then once again knight to e6 winning your queen so there are a lot of traps like these uh after d6 bishop c4 a very normal move knight to d7 where you can lose the game immediately so the player with the black pieces if you, if you uh, decide to play the modern defense you need to be aware of the move order and this is one opening where the move order is actually crucial uh, in the peers defense you are allowed many more transpositions and much more flexibility and uh, even though the, the the knight on f6 is this restraining you and uh, giving white the option on e of e5 it's actually helping black castle much sooner because in the modern you don't play knight to f6 you can see that here you are two moves away from castling and it's going to be much harder thus your king often becomes a liability on the f7 square especially with this knight on f3 coming here and the queen coming into f3 so we are going to go over traps like these uh, so six variations to cover six very exciting openings they are all different i have to say i'm looking forward to the tigers modern the most because i think it's the is the best way for black to play and tiger hill up person definitely helped develop the theory and i hope you are excited too uh, let me know what you think let me know which uh, variation are you looking forward to the most i hope you liked this introductory video and i and i that i managed to give you some idea of what the modern defense is about and we are go going co to continue soon uh, thanks very much and uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye bye.